Mabuhay! Ito na naman kami and today is a very, very special episode. Right, Mare? Yes! Bakit special? Kilig tayo na yun. Basta mamaya, ipakwento natin kung bakit special, di ba? But first, Mare, you wanna say hi yes. to all our viewers? Oo, salamat everybody for all your support, especially Sally Velasquez 7511, Joseph Ahardo 9700, Uma Ruthie 3204 and Lalen Lares 3822. Salamat guys. Thank you so much. Sila yung sila yung mga nag-comment dun sa episode with their pamangkin Grace. Oh, great. So thank you so much and I hope you guys um just keep watching Mabuhay Studios dahil marami pa kaming mga exciting episodes and mga mga unexplored in the places and people just like the special people over here <laughs> sino ba sila ito mare ipas ko daw sa iyo yung ball kasi yeah. nagtotok ganun pala yun ganun pala yun okay the real okay, okay bakit sino sila They ikaw mag-introduce. Ikaw mag- yes, <laughs> yes. So, the handsome men right here, obviously, are the loves of our lives. Yes. Uh, makes us <laughs> Ay, smile nako. each and every day. <laughs> and also keeps us in our toes. Yes. So, ikaw ulit. <laughs> yes, of course. Our um, basketball stars. Legends. Legends. <laughs> o, oh, diba? My husband is one. Of course, Jimmy Alapag. Yes. Tawan-tawan. <laughs> 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 <Jimmy Alapag. laughs> Tawan-tawan. <You're very laughs> <laughs> But kind of weird, de ba? <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Alapag here, baby. Thanks. <laughs> you can talk. Say hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thankful to be on the show. And of course, my handsome. Right here, Nick Velasco. Dad, say hi. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having us. Guys, sila po yung dahilan kung bakit po kami nandito sa Amerika. Talaga. <laughs> <laughs> My who got? Okay, that's the reason why we are here because they were both born and raised here in the U.S. So they're gonna tell us more about that, and of course, we're gonna talk about basketball and champre the FIBA. Was it FIBA World, World, World Cup? Kailangan niya. It's the FIBA World Cup. I know that yes. because he always wakes up in the middle of the night to watch the games there. So um, we're gonna talk about Gilas, of course, and Philippine basketball, right, Mare? Ano pa? Dalawang episode tayo eh with them. Because champre, this is our chance. To interview them because busy sila. They're so uh, busy, very, very busy, which makes us very busy at home. <laughs> because they've been busy. Yeah, so we're excited to to um, interview them, de ba? So we're gonna get to know um, Nick, of course, before you know we became the dream team of our own. Yes. How are you? Before we met, what made you go to the Philippines? And Basketball. Play? So, uh, you know, in college, I uh, went to school at Notre Dame, then a mirror in the Bay Area. And if you're six foot six and Filipino, the scouts and agents are going to find you. Um, you know, and they found me as soon as I went out to the Bay. And I didn't even know they had basketball in the Philippines, to be honest. You didn't. I had no idea. And I, I'd never been there before because we're a third generation in the U.S. My family came here in 1926. Oh, wow. Wow. So they went straight to Stockton. They went all around the Western, you know, region doing farm labor and, and farming. And they were oh. part of that group. Okay. Um, so when I was playing basketball, and a lot of agents were coming out. A lot of Filipinos were coming out. Uh, that's when they told me that I could play in the pro league in the Philippines. Um, and then I started playing in the San Francisco Pro-Am. And there was a lot of Filipinos that would come out and, and watch and take note of who the Filipino players were in that league. And I was the only one at that time. What year was this, like, when you ended up getting scouted to the Philippines to go to the That league? was probably 1993, 94. Wow. Oh, it's a 10-year difference. Huh? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> a lot of people would watch me, and I became friends with guys like Alex Rototo. He would come out and watch okay. uh, the games, and, and he would take note of me because I was Filipino. Oh. And um, I, I became friends with him, like, 10 years later, you know. Wow. But... Um, It's, it was a weird experience, but going through college, 
I knew I was going to play in the Philippines and uh, Bobby Rios, my agent, set everything up. Uh -huh. And I was drafted number two behind Andy Siegel in 1997 draft for, okay. for Pop Cola. And the rest is history. Oh, yeah, Pop Cola. Mm -hmm. My gosh. There was no Pop Cola when no. you got there. No, well, no, no there wasn't. It became yeah. Coca Cola. It became Coca Cola. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You're okay, the ball. Love. Jimmy, right? Wait, the ball. Jimmy has a totally different story because he is not six six. He is not a six six. No, I'm not. not. He is not. <laughs> so I'm baby. far from it. Yes. Yeah, so how did they discover you, my love? You share with them. So, um, similar to Nick, um, went to went to college here in the states, but took the scenic route um, out of high school. wasn't wasn't heavily recruited. Um, I don't think a lot of colleges are looking for five nine Asian point guards uh, back in the. <laughs> late 90s um so I, I started at a division three school um shout out to the university of laverne um great experience um but just wasn't the wasn't the the competitiveness that i was looking for um you know as a lot of you know division three is non-scholarship uh, a lot of the guys who played on the team had jobs and were really more focused on on the academic side of, of school and uh, as much as uh, academics are important you know i i had dreams of of playing professionally one day. So I left University of Laverne, uh, transferred to a junior college, um, gave me a chance to to really just kind of work on my game and get stronger, not get taller, but get stronger and and uh, just, just try to improve. And that kind of led into me signing with Cal State San Bernardino. Um, you know, an amazing experience. Um, it was a scholarship school, number one, um, which was a big help to us as a family um, back then. And then at the same time, I was only probably about 20 minutes away from where I went to high school. So I stayed, I stayed local in the area. Um, and I think one of the best parts about my college experience was having my entire family there, you know, coming from a big family, being the youngest of six, as you know, yes. um, and just having, they know too. and just, they and, have you know, their own six. you know, and just, <laughs> and, and just having the family there, um, for that whole college experience was, was, was great. Um, you know, their support has, has always meant, you know, so much to, to me in my, you know, in my career. So, mm -hmm. Um, that, that all led to, you know, me getting a chance to, to come to Manila back in 2002, my goodness, a long time ago, um, <laughs> 2002, I got invited by, uh, the, the late coach Ron Jacobs, uh, rest in peace to coach Ron, but, um, got invited to work out the national team and, you know, quick story, um, went through a long process to, to try to finally make the national team, made the team, but wasn't cleared to play. Um, and so about three, four months into the process, I finally get cleared, um, playing my first game in, in Bataan uh, for the national team. And we were playing Pure Foods. Um, this goes so far back because Coach Ronnie Maksanuk, uh, Maksanuk was, was still playing at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is way, way back for all the, the, the PBA, PBA uh, fans from, from those days. And, you know, nationally televised game. It was my, my national debut, first time ever playing um, in the Philippines. And first five minutes, I break my hands. And, you know, it, it went from being like an amazing experience to probably one of the most embarrassing experiences of my career, just because there was so much hype of having a guard who wasn't six feet tall playing for the national team. Um, I think a lot of people back then already had their doubts. Um, and me getting hurt did not help. So, um, you know, but, you know, I think I think God – has a way of, of, of his timing and, and his plan. And so I came back to the States, um, made my way back uh, for the draft in 2003. I was the last pick of the first round. So everybody uh, passed me up in the PBA draft. But, you know, again, was fortunate enough to, to land uh, with one of my best friends and, and one of our best friends in, in Harvey Carey. Um, you know, him and I got drafted together to talk and text. And that was the start of the, the PBA journey. I just want to share frustrated Chenu ano na yon Mike sobrang ani sorry he was frustrated because he was at tenth ba yep tenth pick mm. pero okay lang naman kasi nasabi ka nag rookie of the year proud de ba <laughs> nag rookie of the year naman siya ng time na yon so at least so sobrang frustration <laughs> but I'm thankful though because I I I came into a great situation mm -hmm. you know obviously you know we had a lot of veteran guys you know Asi you know Vic Pablo Bong Ravenna Mark Talan you know guys who were just amazing. Patrick Friend, another close friend, uh, Don Bill Bolano. A lot of, a lot of guys who've been in the league for a long time and really taught Harvey and I both 
what it meant to be a pro um, in the PBA. And so um, still got a lot of love for those guys. And they were instrumental in, in guiding two young guys from the States like Harvey and I um, to start our PBA career. All right. Okay, let, now let's talk about <laughs> Let's talk about their ano, Mare, position. What position did you play? Because it's different from position. Nila. So, Nick, share with us your... Ano. All right. So, my position, um, I was always a defender and a rebounder. Um, I've always been tall and athletic. So, I was a uh, power forward. So, that was my younger position in my career. Um, I was dependent on to guard all the imports and guard them one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So, I, I guarded them with no help. A lot of times. That's why you have a colorful, all these lines in your face, right? Oh, no, that wasn't from, <laughs> from the elbows. Those weren't from the imports. Those are from the locals. <laughs> Holy locks oh, in. Uh, Nelson S.A. Tono. How many total? Can you even count? Uh, I think I have like 18 oh, scars in my head. Sometimes you have to get the ER after a game. Wow. Because I played, I played defense like right in their face. Because <laughs> that's how I was trained in the U.S. But yeah. if you do that, and the, the Filipinos are going to get you with, you know, elbows. And uh, I figured it out, and then I started dishing them out too myself. But, but um, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> yeah, you have to adjust and adapt. Adjust. So, but I played as a rebounder, defender. Then later in my career, way later, because I'm a late bloomer, started shooting three pointers, and and I moved out to the three, which is a small forward. So I played on the wing a little bit. And then you know, as you get older, you got to reinvent your game and and um, evolve with your abilities. And so I got older and slower, so I became more of a center. So I was an undersized center. So I played pretty much all positions except point guard, which was Jimmy's. Okay. Yeah, but if I point guard long the So <laughs> uh, un, un, unlike unlike Nick, I, I, you know, I wasn't uh, very versatile being under six feet. So I was absolutely not. Um, so so my my position in basketball is strictly defined as a point guard. But you know, it's it's. It's a position that I've played my entire life, even back when I was in, in grade school. So um, I don't think the transition was was very difficult. Um, always, always felt like I was, you know, in a position of leadership and, and always tried my best, even as a young kid to, you know, to be a great example, to, to work hard, be, be the first in the gym, um, be the last to leave. Because, you know, I'm sure unlike Nick, you know, as a, as a high school freshman, I'm I'm four foot nine on the varsity team. So mm. I had no choice but to do extra stuff, um, you know, to to stay competitive, um, even even going through high school and college here. So um, point guard all day. Yeah. We're, we'll share with you guys the pictures of an Jimmy High School. <laughs> we'll, we'll pull them out of the archives. They're, they're, they're somewhere hidden away. <laughs> Like Noah, that was really? his hair. Like, as in, like, okay, look at, let's, look let's, let's That's when I was like this big. No, high school. you've got like basketball ones, right, mom? He's got no, basketball pictures. That was pictures like of fourth hair. grade. That's fourth grade. Wait, okay, was Kaka Kaka Kapis na, right? Kapis na Tiba. Oh, because it's someone won that, right? Yep. Okay, so you guys' thoughts on like what happened with you like? Let Nick go first. Sure. Uh, well, I didn't watch it much, uh, but oh, sorry. Um, I, <laughs> gotcha, I, gotcha. I was just happy to see all the attention go to the Philippines. Uh, you know, you, we're here in the U.S., so watching Sports Center every night was Malavasia Arena or Araneta Coliseum, mm -hmm. and um, seeing all of our guys on the yeah. court playing against the top players in the world, NBA players, the top Canadians, the top Germans, everything, Europeans, and, yeah. and competing. Um, of course, you know, they fell short, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I still have faith in the program. I know they're making major adjustments now. Uh, I, what I do mean, you think they could have done, like, differently? Uh, it's hard to say because, you know, you, we're not there in the locker room with them, and, yeah. and no, we're not there with them day to day. A lot of people, fans, of course, are going to criticize. Yeah. Uh, of course, they're criticizing Coach Chot and, and the decisions that, that he made, but, we're not there every day, so yeah, we can't okay. really put ourselves in his position and, and say he should have did this or should have did that. Yeah. And we're, we're sure that he did the best with what he had at hand, and it came out the way it, it happened. But I did hear a lot of uh, talk about some guy named Alapag that they're trying to pull <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's you. 
<laughs> well, no. people ask me all the time, well, why isn't Jimmy going? Like, he's in the NBA now. I know. I, he's busy right now. I want to so. know, would you coach? I want to know that. <laughs> so I can go home. <laughs> 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 well, no, I, just to, to piggyback off, off what, what Nick was saying, though, you know, it was, I think, one of the coolest things about watching Gilas this year in, in the FIBA World Cup was, like he said, watching the games at Mall of Asia Arena, watching the games at, at, at the Smart Arnetta Coliseum, like, those are the arenas that we played in, and those are the, the arenas that we won championships in. So, to see that, you know, platform for, for the world to see, knowing that we have so many special memories there. Um, it, it definitely hit a little different, you know, watching the games at 2 a.m. But again, seeing seeing some of the best players in the world on the same court where we had so much success. So I think that was that was a really cool part. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of the team, you know, obviously I, I don't think they they performed as well as they would have liked. Um, I think being at home, I think the goal was to try to get to the second round. Um, you know, they finished the tournament, you know, really well beating China. So at least uh, finish the World Cup with a win, but um, I'm sure you know Coach Shot and the staff would have loved for them to have gotten another win and, and made it to the second round. But you know, again, it's tough. You know, the the FIBA World Cup. You know, the the fans and and, and everyone and everyone watching has to understand. You know, those are the best players in the world, um, and, and it's it's not an easy task. And I think I think the the players of this particular generation of Gilas, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. You know, I know they. They all sacrificed a lot to, to, to be out there, you know, especially at home. Um, but again, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they only won one game. They didn't make it to the second round. So I think it, it's now, I think for the program moving forward, it's how, how can we build on this and, and how can we be better? Because, um, you know, I, I, think, I think Filipino fans, we, we all have a very deep love and passion for the game. And, and, and when we don't succeed at, at the – at the expectations that everyone wants or, 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 or expects, you know, <laughs> there's, there's always going to be um, comments, you know, good and bad, but, you know, again, I think, I think, you know, I, I think Nick and I have a unique connection to the Gilas program because we've both been a part of it for, for a long time. Um, and, you know, I just hope that the, the program again continues to grow to, to answer to answer your question, no. To answer no. To answer your question, absolutely. Then you know this, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I would I would definitely be open to to coaching Gilas in the future. I would definitely be open. But you know, again, you know, it, it'll be it's a little bit more complicated now that I'm I'm with uh, the Sacramento Kings. But again, you know, my my heart will always be with you know, with the Philippines, with the national team. So if ever, you know, no one's reached out to me, but if ever there was an opportunity in the future to to possibly coach Gilas, absolutely, 100%. So speaking of that, of course, congratulations who my, who my to you passing to, <laughs> Who am I passing to? Yeah, congratulations to you both for being such a, um, you know, an inspiration to the Filipinos and everybody around the world, right? So we want to talk about your um, best career highlights. So I put it all over the house. Most so, back then, remember, career remember when the photographers back then yeah, would you, like have frames? Oh yeah, and frames. Then the, the books. Tony Lou. <laughs> oh. Shout out to Tony Lou out there yeah. in, in the Philippines. Yeah. So, Dad, what's your favorite? Um, I think just winning championships. You yeah. know, because yeah. you know, like when Jimmy's the same way, and, and we're all the same way. Every day when we wake up in the morning. Uh, getting ready for practice or driving to practice or going through a practice process. We're doing it for one reason, and that's to win the championship. We're not going out there to be second place. So when you uh, finally win one, you know, it's, shop. you know, <laughs> that was fun. and we've all had the experience. Um, we all had the same pictures of having our kids. You know, I had Nico there with me in, in championship pictures all the way to uh, Nikki. Nikki. And the two little ones, they haven't got to experience that. But yeah, our kids didn't get to experience it. The, when you play, you weren't nah, playing because we had yeah. kids after that. Yep. Oh. Oh, yeah. 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 The, yeah. The, yeah. The, the finals. The no, finals. no balloon drop though. No balloon drop. <laughs> yeah. no. Thank you, Justin bitterness. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ultimate is winning a championship, yeah. and and nothing else matters. And me and Jimmy are the same way. That's all we're focused on. Like. Yeah. 
as wise, I'm sure you experienced it. Like, we don't see anything except we're going after that championship. Well, you guys, you know, you know, everybody out there, it's different to be part of the family or a wife or a partner mm -hmm. and then a fan because, like they were saying about Coach Shot, we know what's happening behind the scenes because we see how hard our husbands are working, yes. yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Even like with Nick on the way to, if we ride with him on the game, so oh. quiet. Quiet guys, don't talk. Never mind, I'm not gonna drive with you anymore. You go by yourself. No I distractions. When there's a loss, because this guy is just so calm. Oh, oh same, same. And you can't wait to play again. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> so we're at the gym the next morning. Why don't we grieving for a couple of days? Yeah, you know? it's yeah like, exactly. It's like, Especially if it was like a championship oh, yeah. game, and then you oh, yeah. just like, I'll wake up and then you go. <laughs> Well, we were at that yeah. pro level, and um, like our our kids are playing high school sports, okay. and um, we're teaching them no distractions. That's what it's all about. You're focused on that one thing and winning. That's true. Okay, career highlights. <sighs> career highlights. Um, I have one. <laughs> all right, what's your what's your career highlight? <laughs> no, I always felt like I was playing. Always. I know. Every, after the game, I don't know. After the game, I just want to share. I'd be so tired. Right? Yes. He'd be like, geez, it's like you play because I'm so tired from screaming, getting mad at the ref. It's emotional. No, my career highlight. My career highlight was when you broke the Korean first. The, uh, 2013. Yeah, that one. Oh. The Moa, the yep. That's my career yep. highlight. Oh, what's your you and I, you, you and I, you and I both. Um, no, again, I think I think like like Nick said, obviously the championships because I think each one is special in in their own unique way. Um, you know, you develop very close relationships with the guys that that you win with, and and, and it's really a bond that you that you carry for the rest of your life. Um, so I think I think every championship that Nick and I have been fortunate enough to win all carry a special sentiment to each one um and then of course like you said my my experience with the national team you know obviously 2013 against korea you know a team that we hadn't beaten in my goodness 20 i think it was 25 years wow. um so to beat them and to beat them at home you know again at mall of asia arena where you know some of the best teams and players in the world are, are just finished playing in the world cup so um that stands out and then of course you know our our experience in, in spain you know because oh, yeah. because playing in the world cup you know i was at the tail end of my career in 2014 um, you know, we already had Ian. Yeah. You were pregnant with Kiona. And no medica ho. And medica ho after the game. Tell yeah. What okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> a, a quick story before that. So we weren't even sure if Ian was going to be able to get his passport. Like literally, a, a, a miracle happened yeah. where he was able to get his passport to travel. She was already four or five months, no, six, months. six months pregnant with with Kiona. Was it the Argentina game? I don't remember, but I just or maybe I it was either the Argentina game that we lost by two, or the game when we—I think it was the game we beat Senegal, because no, it wasn't yet. That was you sure? his birthday when we beat Senegal. Yeah, it was before that. Anyway, it was one of the games <laughs> in the World Cup, and it was one of the close games that we played. Um, if I remember correctly, it was against Argentina. We lost. We lost to, you know, the then number three team in the world. You know, everyone's like congratulating us because we should have beat them, yeah. and. And I'm doing interviews, and then all of a sudden, like, one of the FIBA officials was like, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Alpag, um, you have to come with us. I'm like, why? Why am I going with you? I was like, oh, no, we had to bring your wife to the back because she was feeling dizzy cheering. Oh, I and so I was pregnant, but I was so excited. I threw Ian up in the air. And oh, God. God. And I was like, wait, everything's spinning. So I go into absolute panic mode. <laughs> go to the back and like the the er people are there and i'm like are you good and she's like i'm so sorry i just got so excited <laughs> so just a side story uh, i don't think too many people have heard that story oh, from yeah, from yeah, our yeah, our yeah, experience yeah. in sevilla but um yeah so anyway yep. thank you guys we're not done yet because we have our part two the person is how to basketball and we're gonna talk about our love story how did we meet oh my goodness and, you, know, you know we've been married for 13 years right you saw me was it like oh my god we thought I was attractive now <laughs> <laughs> we were at Pravda one time and 
Oh, throw, <laughs> throwback. <laughs> Dang. Ali Peek didn't feel like dancing, and he was like, Nick, dance with uh, my face. Ali Peek, shout out. So, Ali Peek, thank you, man. Ali. And that's kind of how it started, and we just kept hanging out, became friends, and um, you know, now we're a family of eight.